Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here. Long time no see, I've been updating Raya Pro and Instamask and the update should be out at the end of February next year. And there's loads of great new features, one of which I'm gonna show you here. And remember, if you purchase Raya Pro uh, 2.0, which is the current version, then you get 3.0 completely free and every other version free. So if you're thinking about buying it, why not go for it now and you'll have 2.0 and 3.0 in the future. So, the technique we're going to look at today is called saturation masks and essentially what it's going to allow us to do is target the most saturated or colourful areas in our image and desaturate them or add more contrast to them, uh, do anything we want really. Now as far as I understand it, this was something that was made available in CC um, but it isn't available in CS5 or CS6. But there is a plugin that you can download which will do it for you. So I've included a link in the description of this video. Um, so click on that and it should take you to some uh, downloads for plugins which will allow you to follow along with this tutorial if you're using CS6 or CS5. If you're using CC, this should be absolutely fine. Now as I mentioned before, saturation masks essentially allow us to target the most saturated areas in our image. Now if you look at this image, uh, let's say we click on um, a vibrance layer. So we open up a vibrance layer here and we bring vibrance up and you can see it affects certain parts of the image. Now, essentially what Vibrance does is it targets the less saturated areas on our image and increases the saturation in those while not affecting the most saturated areas. And of course, saturation just does a big blanket uniform increase of saturation across all colors. So it seems that we don't have a way to target the most colorful areas in our frame. However, through saturation masks, we can actually do that. Now with this image, I've already blended all three exposures using Instamask, so that was the original exposure, the base exposure. And after blending, we've come up with a more balanced scene. I haven't added any contrast or anything like that. This is just a quick exposure blending job, just to show you how useful saturation masks can be. Now, the front here, these sticks going out under the water are extremely saturated and that's because behind me when I was shooting was a street light and the street light is obviously yellow and illuminating these sticks. So I want to desaturate these sticks. Now there is a really easy way to do it actually without saturation masks. We can just open up a hue saturation layer, choose this little hand tool and then click on any area in these sticks and just bring down the saturation. And you see we've desaturated those sticks. And for this image, I'd probably do that instead of using a saturation mask. But there'll be lots of examples or images that you're working with where a saturation mask would do a much better job. So let's see about making one. Again, as I mentioned, I'm gonna add a saturation mask option into the next Insta mask, which by the way, will be available for CS6 users as well in February. So we're gonna add a saturation mask and that allows us to tweak the mask just like we normally can do with say for example a normal luminosity mask you know we can tweak it just like this and that's what we'll be able to do with a saturation mask as well so to create a saturation mask we need to create a new layer so we can do that by holding Control alt shift and e or command option shift and e on a mac and we've created a merged layer of all of these layers below now all we need to do is go to filter other and hsb slash HSL and click on that. And now we have this pop-up box. So just make sure your pop-up box is the same as mine. So we've got RGB as the first option and HSB as the second option. And then just press okay. And now we have this crazy looking image and this isn't really too important. What we're gonna do, however, is go into our channels palette. And the only channel that's interesting to us right now is the green channel because this has the saturation mask that we're going to use. And as you can see, the most saturated part in our image is definitely the foreground sticks and they are the whitest part in the image. So that means they're going to be selected in our mask. Now, traditionally, when we create saturation masks, we press down command or control and we select with our marching ants and then we can create a mask based on this selection. However, to make sure that this is a 16-bit saturation mask, and obviously you have to be editing in 16-bit mode, we can open up, let's say, a hue saturation layer. And with the mask selected, I'm just gonna close that. We can go to image, apply image, and we're gonna check the RGB 
channel and go to green. Now make sure the rest of your settings are the same as mine and just press OK. Now I'm going to make the saturation mask invisible and hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and we can see the mask that we've created. So if I bring down the saturation, the general saturation, we're bringing down the saturation in the sticks. And that's exactly what we wanted to target. Now, obviously, we are targeting other areas too. So if I hold down Option again on a Mac or Alt on a PC and left click on the mask, we can see that we're also targeting the mountains here in the background. And that's not really what we want to do. So that's the before and after. And you can see we're slightly desaturating these areas. That's why I think it's better to do the hue saturation example we used before when we used the hand and selected this in these individual tones. Nevertheless, the great thing about a saturation mask is that we can edit it just like we can a luminosity mask. So I've made the mask visible, and if this was on Instamask, we could just use these sliders. But instead, right now, we can press Command in L or Control in L, and I can bring these sliders along like this. And so we're targeting more of the sticks and less of the mountains. So this is the before and after. Now we're mainly just targeting the sticks. And so that's how we create a 16-bit saturation mask. Now that can be really useful when you have lots of different colors going on and you want to desaturate the really strong colors but you don't want to affect you know, the subtler colors. For example, if you're shooting a beautiful landscape, you might have some uh, flowers in front of you with beautiful reds and yellows and magentas and you might have grass as well in front of you and you want to desaturate that foreground without affecting the grass because it might go a little bit dull. Well chances are the reds, yellows and magentas might be more saturated than the grass. So if you create a saturation mask like this you can essentially desaturate the flowers just a little bit in case they're a little bit overwhelming without affecting the grass for example. And of course, you can refine the mask further, you know, just masking things out manually with a paintbrush or by uh, command in L or control in L like we did in here. There's lots of different options. And when this function is added to Instamask, we'll be able to add or subtract any other mask from that selection. So we can add um, luminosity masks, range masks, which are also going to be added in the next Instamask, uh, color masks, anything you want so we can create a really advanced specific selection. So anyway, I hope you found that useful for now and I look forward to sending you more tutorials in 2018. Have a fantastic Christmas and New Year. All the best. Bye.